video, I wanna show you what the difference is between the DJI RS3 Mini and the RS3 and the RS3 Pro. I know it can get super confusing with all of the different gimbal options. So what I wanted to do is put together a video that shows you the difference between all of these gimbals and why you might wanna choose the RS3 Mini over the bigger RS3 or RS3 Pro. haven't met before, my name is Jevin Dovey and I have a production company and I also do a lot of adventure filmmaking. And throughout my years of working as a professional creator, I've used both smaller gimbals and bigger gimbals depending on the types of projects that I'm working on. But overall, gimbals have become such an essential tool for everything that I do because they're a super useful tool to get smooth footage for whatever you're filming. So when I'm working on a client job and I have a much bigger production, I'll typically use a gimbal like the RS3 Pro so that I can build it out and be able to have a bigger setup. However, if I'm off climbing a mountain or traveling across the world, then I'm gonna use the RS3 Mini, which is a smaller compact gimbal that I can easily put in my backpack, be able to take with me wherever I go. Now, I just wanna say a special thanks to DJI for sponsoring this video. And let's dig into all of these gimbals and see what the differences between between each of them. Let's first talk about the size and weight. The RS3 Mini is a small, compact, lightweight gimbal. It only weighs 1.75 pounds, and when you're using the horizontal attachment, it's 1.8 pounds. The RS3 is 2.2 pounds, and the RS3 Pro is 3.3 pounds. It might not seem like a ton of weight, but when you're holding a gimbal for long periods of time, that weight does make a difference, and it's gonna allow you to use this gimbal much easier as a solo creator for longer stretches of time. Now, even though the RS3 Mini is smaller and lightweight, it can still hold heavier cameras. So the payload on this gimbal is up to 4.4 pounds. So you could use a full frame mirrorless camera with a 24 to 70 out front and still be able to balance it on the gimbal. And the DJI RS3 Mini has the highest payload capacity in this category of small travel lightweight gimbals. Now the RS3 can hold up to 6.6 .6 pounds and the RS3 Pro can hold up to 10 pounds. So if you are someone that's gonna be using heavier setups or even bigger cinema cameras like an FX6, a RED, or like an Alexa Mini, well, then you'll want to use the RS3 Pro because it can hold those heavier cameras. However, if you're using a full frame mirrorless camera, you can use the RS3 or the RS3 Mini. When I've been out shooting, I've been using my A7S III with a 20 to 40 millimeter lens with a big ND filter out front. Now it's towards the limit of what the RS3 Mini can handle. However, I was still able to balance it properly and I was able to get super smooth shots. This is super useful for anyone who's doing outdoor content or travel content, because I know there's a lot of you out there who are using full frame cameras, and it's good to be able to use a small compact gimbal that you can take with you anywhere and still be able to use your full frame camera. Now, if you're someone who's using a smaller setup, say it's the ZV-E10 or something like a smartphone, well, you'll be able to take advantage of all the capabilities that this gimbal offers while not having to have the bigger setup and the bigger footprint of the RS3. All right, so next let's talk about the battery. So the battery on the RS3 Mini is not removable. On this gimbal, it's a fixed battery and the battery lasts 10 hours. It takes about two and a half hours to fully charge it. So this means that when you're out filming with the RS3 Mini, you'll have about a day's worth of filming when you're turning this on and off, whereas the RS3 and the RS3 Pro have a removable battery. Now the battery that comes with the RS3 lasts around 12 hours and it takes the same two and a half hours to charge it. So you'll get a little bit longer runtime out of the RS3 battery and it's removable. So you can have multiple batteries with you if you're gonna be using it longer than 12 hours and you're gonna to need to swap out between charges. All right, let's talk about traveling with these gimbals. So when you look at all of them side by side, the RS3 Mini is significantly smaller than the other two. And also it can break down smaller for your backpack. So there's two ways that you can fold up the RS3 Mini. You could either do what's called a half fold or the full fold. On the half fold, your camera will stay balanced. However, the horizontal roller won't be fully adjusted, so it's gonna stick out slightly on the side. Now, if you're using the full fold, that's where you'll push in that horizontal roller, and you can also take off the horizontal plate 
so that it packs down much smaller. On the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, you can remove the battery, which is gonna help you save some space, and then you'll also have to remove the camera plate to be able to pack it down much smaller. But overall, the footprint of the RS3 Mini is much smaller than the RS3 and the RS3 Pro. Now, one of the big differences with the RS3 Mini is that it's set up for vertical shooting. So the horizontal arm can be fully removed and the camera plate attachment can be put on the vertical arm, which allows you to mount the camera vertically to make it easy to shoot vertical content. With the RS3 or the RS3 Pro, you have to have additional accessories to be able to do this vertical style shooting. So the RS3 Mini is much more set up for social media content and creators who are shooting vertical content. And if you are someone who's gonna switch between vertical and horizontal, it's a really quick process to remove the horizontal arm and reposition the camera plate so that you have this vertical shooting capability. All right, so let's talk about how you mount the camera onto these gimbals. Because there is a little bit of a difference. You use the same quick release plate on both the RS3 Mini and the RS3 and RS3 Pro. The difference is on the RS3 Mini, you connect this camera plate directly to the gimbal. Whereas on the RS3 and RS3 Pro, you have the secondary camera plate that's gonna adjust your forwards and backwards horizontal balance. On the RS3 Mini, to be able to balance your tilt, it's actually built into the gimbal itself, so you're not using this plate to push your camera forwards or backwards. This allows the RS3 Mini to get rid of this additional plate, and it makes the whole setup much smaller. Next, let's talk about the Bluetooth connectivity because on all three of these gimbals, you can attach directly to your camera via Bluetooth. Now, this feature is super useful because you can just go into the menu and attach it directly to your camera without any wires. On the older models like the RS2 or the RSC2, you had to use a cable that went from your gimbal to the camera to be able to take control of your camera's settings. On these gimbals, you have full Bluetooth connectivity so that whenever you put your camera on the gimbal and power on the gimbal, it connects automatically to your camera. So it's a super useful feature that also limits the amount of gear that you need to plug in every time you're using your gimbal. Now, one big difference between all of these gimbals is the additional attachments that you can add on. You can add on an additional focus motor and there's ports on the side of the gimbal that allow you to plug all of this in. On the RS3 Mini, you don't have any of these additional ports. So the RS3 Mini is set up to use less gear and auto focus lenses. Whereas on the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, they're set up to be able to add these additional accessories so you can use manual lenses and be able to control your focus, whether it's on the gimbal itself or if you're doing a two-person operation where one person is actually just physically moving the gimbal in space and the other person is controlling using an additional monitor and focus wheel. Next, let's talk about stabilization. All three of these gimbals use the same third generation RS stabilization. So it's gonna be the best stabilization that DJI offers for these gimbals. Now, but the big difference when you're working with the different different sizes is that when you're holding a heavier gimbal, it's gonna be a lot easier to keep that footage stable than a lightweight gimbal. And this is just the nature of holding something light versus something heavy. When you're working with the RS3 Mini, you just have to be a little bit more focused with your movements because any lightweight gimbal will show more shake when you're moving it up and down just because it's easier for you to move it around. Whereas when you have a heavy camera on a heavy gimbal, it's much easier to keep it smooth. However, you can only go for short periods of time when you have a heavy gimbal out front walking around. So the RS3 Mini is much better set up for longer shoot times and easier to hold, but you just wanna make sure that you're more focused on keeping that camera stable because it is lighter and you can move it around easier. Next, let's go over the additional accessories you can add on these gimbals. With the RS3 Mini, you do have the ability to add on additional accessories like a back handle for low angle shots. On the side of the gimbal, there's one cold shoe mount that allows you to add one additional accessory. On the RS3 and RS3 Pro, they have two mounting points, one on either side of the gimbal. On the RS3, these are cold shoe mounts, which means that you can add something like the dual handles to be able to give yourself more stability. On the RS3 Pro, they're hot shoe mounts. So if you are someone who's working in more of a pro setting, this allows you to build out your gimbal much bigger, be able to add on additional accessories. So for me, when I'm shooting my professional client work, I'll use the RS3 Pro that allow me to run this as a two person operation and be able to add a full ring around my gimbal and add all of my controls on that ring so that I'm not having to actually touch the gimbal itself. If you're someone who's really gonna be building out this setup, then the RS3 Pro makes a lot of sense. However, the RS3 Mini is much more set up for single person operation. So you can run this without any additional accessories or you can add on the back handle which allows you to get those super low angle shots easily. All right, so let's go over the button configuration on these gimbals because it's very similar, but there is slight differences. On the RS3 Mini, 
you'll have a record button, you have a mode button, and you have a full integrated OLED touchscreen, which allows you to change between the different modes, and there's a lot of functionality by swiping through the various menus. Now, on the front of the gimbal, you have a trigger, and then you have a wheel that you can change for the different modes that you want set up. On the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, you have all of the same buttons, but then you also have a physical mode switch. And the switch allows you to change from pan tilt follow to pan follow mode or to FPV mode. And then you can customize the FPV mode to set up for any mode that you want. So you have a physical button on the side of these gimbals that allows you to switch between three modes super fast. Now the other difference is the OLED screen on the RS3 and the RS3 Pro is a little bit bigger. It's 1.8 inches versus on the RS3 mini, it's 1.4 inches. However, they all have the same type of touchscreen. Everything is accessible in the menu on the gimbal, so you don't have to use your phone to change any of the settings when you're out filming. There's a lot of functionality to be able to control everything that you need on this gimbal. Now, one big difference between these gimbals is the automated access lock. So on the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, once you have your camera balanced, you can turn on the power button and the gimbal will automatically recenter itself and be ready to start filming. And then when you turn it off, it will go into a lock mode and automatically lock all the motors back into a fully collapsed mode. This is a feature that's really awesome for these bigger gimbals. And because of their size, it allows you to be able to balance your gimbal and be able to fully fold it up with it still balanced. With the RS3 Mini, because of how small and compact the gimbal is, once you balance the camera, you can't fully collapse the gimbal. So this is where you'll fold it into that half fold mode, which allows it to be compact, but the camera stays balanced. And with the RS3 Mini, there's no automated access lock and unlock on the gimbal. So with all those differences, let's go over the price differences for each of these gimbals, because that ultimately might be the determining factor of which gimbal you wanna get. So the RS3 Pro is the most expensive at 869. The RS3 is in the middle at 549, and the RS3 Mini is the cheapest at 369. So the RS3 Mini is smaller, lightweight, more compact, and much cheaper than these bigger gimbals. So ultimately, which gimbal should you get? And it really comes down to the type of content that you're shooting. If you're someone who's gonna be doing run and gun style shooting and you want a small compact kit, well the RS3 Mini is gonna be a very good option and it's gonna be able to be the lightest option out of the three. If you're always carrying your camera gear on your backpack like I am, then it's good to be able to shave weight where possible. Now you might wanna jump up to the RS3 if you're using a little bit heavier camera setup or you wanna have the flexibility to take multiple batteries. Now if you're someone who's gonna be doing two person operation or you're gonna be working on much bigger sets, then the RS3 Pro is gonna make the most sense for you. All three of these gimbals are great tools to be able to get super smooth footage whenever you're out filming. And if you want some ideas on how to get better shots with your gimbal, well make sure you check out this video right here. It goes through a bunch of different gimbal moves that's gonna help you get better shots when you're out filming. I'll see you over there.